Let's talk about the circulatory system. It has five functions. It carries nutrients to cells and wastes away from cells. It carries chemical messengers or hormones from cells in one part of the body to distant target tissues. It distributes heat throughout the body. It provides immunity, which means defense against invading organisms by making white blood cells and along with the kidneys, maintains levels of body fluids. Starting with the heart, the biggest vessel leading away from the heart are the arteries. We'll remember that they are away by saying A stands for away. Arteries lead into arterioles, which lead to capillaries where diffusion of gases occur, then venules, and finally veins. Veins have one-way valves. So the blood flows away from the heart through arteries and in arterioles, through the capillaries, and back up through the venules and veins. The blue represents deoxygenated blood, which means low oxygen and high carbon dioxide. And the red represents oxygenated blood, high oxygen and low carbon dioxide. The actual colors of deoxygenated and oxygenated blood are a dark red and a bright red. Arteries have thick muscular walls that can stretch easily to control the amount of blood flowing. Arterioles contain smooth muscle to regulate amount of blood flowing to tissues. Function is carry blood away from the heart. The arterioles can vasodilate, get wider, and vasoconstrict get narrower. A pulse is created when blood passes through an artery. A person's blood pressure is the pressure of the blood in an artery when the heart contracts. A capillary is the smallest blood vessel with thin walls that are only one cell thick. The red blood cells pass through only one at a time. That's how wide the capillaries are. In fact, damaging a capillary bed causes bruising as blood rushes into the interstitial spaces. Precapillary sphincter muscles regulate the movement of blood from the arterioles into the capillaries. No cell is further than two cells away from a capillary. Capillaries are one cell thick to allow for diffusion and osmosis. Nutrients and oxygen move into the tissues and carbon dioxide moves into the blood. So from the capillary, oxygen and nutrients travel to the tissue and carbon dioxide and waste travel from the tissue back into the capillary. Capillaries merge and become progressively larger vessels called venules. Venules are small veins. The venules come together and eventually form veins. Veins have one-way valves to prevent flow of blood the wrong way. They also have less smooth muscle than do arteries. Veins are thin-walled. They have less smooth muscle than arteries. They're larger in diameter on the inside and they contain one-way valves. They carry blood back to the heart. So blood flows, leaving the heart as oxygenated blood through arteries and arterioles. Diffusion happens in the capillaries and then deoxygenated blood comes back to the heart through the venules and veins. So from the heart, blood leaves through the arteries, then the arterioles, enters a capillary bed where diffusion happens, then comes back through the venule and the vein and back to the heart. The return of blood to the heart involves two problems. Blood is under low pressure, which is not sufficient to drive the blood back to the heart, and blood, especially from the lower limbs, must move up against gravity. So two solutions to this include one-way valves. They only allow blood to move toward the heart. 
So here the valves are open, blood can flow up. Here the blood cannot flow back down. Skeletal muscle contractions push blood in the vein back to the heart. So here's a relaxed skeletal muscle, and here's one that says is contracted. You can see it has narrowed the vein, and because blood can't move down, it has to move up. The walls of arterioles are muscular and elastic, so they expand and contract. This is called vasodilation and vasoconstriction. Vasodilation allows heat to dissipate across skin, and vasoconstriction keeps in heat, provides less circulation to that area. Vasodilation increases blood flow and delivery of nutrients to the tissue for release of heat. It does this by increasing the diameter of the blood vessel. Vasoconstriction reduces blood flow to the tissues to conserve heat and reduces the diameter of the blood vessel.